Hello, my boils, my ghouls, and my zools. Welcome back to Kalash Kamaz. This is the first episode of something new I want to try. It's a little surplus series. We're going to take a look at some surplus finds, talk about where they came from, who made them, how they were used, who used them, and possibly how you could use one today with something like, you know, airsoft, you know, LARPing during a competition or cosplay or something like that. What we are looking at today are body armor modules from NPO Special Materials Corporation called Module 3 and Module 5. These particular pieces were used in both the First and Second Chechen War. Now, Special Materials Corporation is a company that develops many armor solutions for clients Russian, domestic, and foreign in the areas of law enforcement, security, and military. Forming in 1991 during the flames of the Soviet Union, the ashes of the USSR saw the Ministry of Internal Affairs being reformed with many of its functions being redistributed to other government agencies. The newly formed MVD was now responsible for the Polizia, which are the National Police, the General Administration of Traffic Safety, the Directorate for Drugs Control, the Directorate for Migration Control, and since the disbanding of the Federal Tax Service, they also investigate white-collar economic crimes. Both Chechen wars saw combatants from MVD and Oman, which were notorious for certain cleansing incidents. Currently part of the Russian National Guard, Rosgard, Oman is a special purpose mobile unit responsible for rapid response whose purpose is to restore state order and public peace through actions as light as hosing rioters and beating demonstrators to full combat operations. Oman's history stretches back to 1919 as Siberian state militia units, however, Current Oman operations have a more recent history rooted as a response to the Munich massacre at the 1972 Summer Olympics. Both MVD and Oman used a variety of body armor units such as Module Zeros, Threes and Fives, Koras, Karasas, and the more commonly known 6B3 and 6B5 vests. The camouflage you see on this vest is a special purpose camouflage developed for the MVD called SMK. It stands for Specialny Maskerovishny Komplekt, Special Camouflage Kit. The camouflage patterns came in a variety of summer and winter patterns on summer, winter, and wet weather uniforms. The SMK camouflage family comes in many variations, however, there are two distinct variations in the family. You have the summer variations and the winter variations, which are called Schneek. This is a Module 3. And this is a Module 5. And they also came with accompanying carry bags, which kind of look like shopping bags. And this is the matching carrier for this bag here. So you have a lot of wear and tear on the top layer of this particular carrier. These are actually the same pattern. You just have a bit of discoloration from use. You could see the original coloration on the inside. It's all dirt and sweat and all that. This particular one is called Rostayevshi Snake, melted snow. And this one I've only really seen called Orek Woodland. Russian stuff is notoriously hard to research. Goddamn feel like life of Boris, man. The camera just does not want to stop overheating today. <laughs> Might actually have to whip out the phone and start recording. Lots of gear was produced in these designs. However, you don't see its military use very much outside of the First and Second Chechen War. It was subsequently produced commercially and used by hikers, hunters, and such. These vests were designed to be used in conjunction with unloading vests such as the V95, Cascade, or belt systems such as the Partisan, Payas, 6SH-104, and the very well-known Smirsch. Issuance of these vests would be common all the way up to the Ratnik program where we'd see a complete redesign and homogenization of the Russian military and police gear. However, usage of these vests would go on till today in the Ukraine war. 
So one thing about researching Russian military gear is it is notoriously difficult. There is not a ton of public data out there and they don't put out anything other than, you know, model numbers usually. So you have to rely on a bit of observation because they don't put out data on who they supply. So it takes a bit of digging sometimes. So even though these are Kalash adjacent kind of episodes, it does take quite a bit of work to put something like this together due to the amount of research. So if you like stuff like this, please like, share, and subscribe. I know I say it all the time, but it really does help that much. I'm getting my ass kicked by the algorithm lately, and we need a name for this little uh, surplus show. So if you got an idea, I'm not that creative. Throw an idea in the comments. I don't know. Surplus Sundays ain't that great. So I don't know. Anyway, boils, ghouls, and zools, that's all I got for you. Y'all stay safe, have fun, do stupid.